Just kidding, I would never do that to you. So uh, what we're gonna do is encode this message inside an image and scramble it such that it's encrypted inside an image that we can then just send to anybody and provided they have the private and public keys available to them, they can pull the text back out of the image. Without it, we want it to be very difficult for them to do so. So uh, we're gonna send this message how are we going to take this and turn it into an image? Well, so what we're going to do is we're going to run this Python script that we wrote. Um, this will take that text file in and this image here will be created. The ASCII values of the text are going to serve as either the red, green, or blue values of the pixels in the, inside the image. So we always start from the top left hand corner of the image and then from there the red channel of the image will be the ASCII value of the first character inside of the message we want to send. So capital W in ASCII will be the red value. The green and the blue values are going to be randomly generated and those values are going to be uh, serving as a way to go to the next pixel. They'll, they'll be the XY coordinate of the pixel matrix in order to then know which pixel to take a look at and then from there we'll pull out the red green and blue values uh, of that pixel and continue on that's how we will read the image later but encoding it will be this way we also alternate the red green and blue channels as the ones that will contain the actual ASCII text is not just another way to scramble it. So um, we'll run this script here. Uh, first, I gotta set my folder. Okay. So yeah, so we're gonna run this this guy here, and it will create a new image based on the content of this message here. So this is what it'll look like. So the top left hand corner, that pixel there, the RGB values are going to encode information about where to go for the next one as well as the uh, ASCII value of the text. Now if we sent just this, that might be a problem because, well, there's no encryption. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, uh, you would need to know how it's encoded, but uh, it'd be easy enough to read straight off. So what we'll do, there's a couple ways we could do it. So we, we've got a script here that uh, We'll pull images from the internet and at random, uh, and you know, save them as our public and private keys. Uh, if we run this, we've got two new image files created in this directory now. So our public key will look something like this. We've got some kind of uh, mountainous terrain here, and then we also have our private key. Uh, a very nice juxtaposition. So we've got those two images and we could combine it with this. Um, the only main drawback to those is that the final image will be, it'll be obvious what private key and public key were used based on the appearance of it, as well as the uh, the pixels in this image won't be scrambled nearly, oh, well, they'll be more visible in the final product. So I can run this encoder and this will encode It'll do the combination of all of those images, as well as generate a whole bunch of uh, text files that uh, give us a different content about the uh, RGB values. For example, um, here's, a, here's a text file that shows what the va RGB values for the pixels in our original image are. So obviously uh, many of them were just dark pixels and uh, like for example, you're going to see whole bunch of them well here 87 that's going to be our capital W we go to 56 171 so if I search for that uh, 56 171 all right so then our next value is going to be 97 in ASCII so we've got a oops excuse me it's the decimal value. Um, and then we've got the uh, the X and Y coordinate of the next one. So it continues like this. This is this is how we will actually pull it out. 
but uh, it comes in handy when we were debugging it, uh, trying to figure out why, you know, we were off by certain amounts or whatnot. So, uh, and we also have that for all of the images. So the, the private key, these are the RGB values of all the pixels in that, and the public key, these are all the RGB values of that image as well. So well, here's what the final product or the combination of those three looks like. So again, you can tell that the, uh, there's mountains and the beach and all the pixels from our image as well there that are all combined here. Um, if we want it to be a lot harder to guess, because first of all, these images were pulled from the internet. I mean, if you just have an image, if depending on where you get it from, it, it may be easy to find the two images that were used to create this. So we also have a private key generator. Um, this will create a noisy image. It's just random RGB values for every single pixel in a 256 by 256 uh, grid. Uh, they don't have to be that. All these, all the, the private and public images are actually uh, scaled uh, so that you can have ones that are larger. So you can use any, any image you want really provided it's a PNG to encode this. So that has generated our, well, it re overwrote this. So this, this is a much stronger uh, private key. So this, if we combine it with our message image, it'll be very hard to tell what pixels are image pixels and which ones are just noise from the private key. Um, the public key we can still leave as the mountains. So if we want to go ahead and run the encoder again. Now we've combined all of those into one image and this is the output so this is what she looks like so yeah uh, a lot harder to uh, to determine what's going on in here but uh, you still have the ability to you know have s some sort of an image in there so it, it just looks like a noisy I don't know deep fried meme or something if you want so uh, in order to get it out we can run our decryptor so what that will do is it will it will uh, it'll open all of the images so you have to have the private and public key in order to be able to do anything if you don't then it's going to be very very hard to uh, pull it out especially because the private key has like a crazy number of uh, possible configurations that would be difficult to guess so um, yeah it, it will pull all of those out and it'll subtract it from there and then if you subtract the two that were used to make it you get the third one out so that's the, the philosophy of it if I run this we can see it will print out what our uh, message was so we got our wake up Neo the matrix has you follow the white rabbit knock knock Neo um, and we also have it uh, it will save the message output like this so between that and this one um, we can see that they are exactly the same as it should be. So this is uh, this is the gist of how our software works. There's a couple things that we could go ahead and improve, um, namely this. If we manage to generate a pixel that has the same RGB value, uh, because they all have to be unique. You can't have uh, the X and Y coordinates be, you know, overwriting each other because then you'll cut the cut your message off. Um, so it then has to go and search through X and Y to make sure that they're not in there. Um, that will slow things down, especially if you have a lot more uh, characters in your message. So that's the main limitation. I mean, there is there is a finite number of possible configurations. It's, what is it, 256 by 256, right? Um, so uh, we also limit it to one as well because of because and when we combine the images so you notice it doesn't go to 255 it goes to 254 when we combine the two images we're actually dividing those RGB values of those of the private and public keys by two um, so you end up losing out on some information by doing that operation so uh, to compensate for that we have to uh, sub make we have to limit the possible space of X Y and coordinates by uh, you know decremented by one in order to be able to do that and still be able to pull the message out uh, at the end um, and the idea too is we don't want to have the combination of the three um, can't make the value of the pixel which is limited to 0 to 255 carry more than once 
uh, or overflow or however you want to call it. Um, so by dividing it by two, we guarantee that it only does that at least once. And then when we decrypt, we just we just are going to take a look to see if it's less than zero. Uh, if we have a negative number, we're just going to add 255 to it. Anyway, so that's the uh, that's the gist of how it all uh, functions. But uh, yeah, the idea is that now if you just go ahead and you want to send this over, you know, post it on someone's wall or something like that. If that person has the uh, private key that you would give to them prior, like either via USB stick or some other like encrypted channel or something, it's going to be very hard for people to pull out the information inside of that image in order to get the text content. That's the idea. Uh, it's it's a little wasteful as far as like a good encryption algorithm goes. It's not efficient. It's that's really beside the point. It was just. The point is we want to be able to post an image and it has something in there that unless you had those keys you couldn't get out. So yeah, uh, that's the, the extent of the project. Enjoy.